What are you gonna do with your four days off? Me? I'm gonna relax. Yeah, until the trade tonight. Trade? What trade? Let's go! Why not? The Toronto Maple Leafs! I guess my brand is a yell and scream. Ah, I don't script these. Are the Leafs all right? So what you get is from the heart. Welcome to LFR. Leafs, go. Leafs, go. Leafs lose four to three against the Ottawa Senators. After a dominating defensive performance, the likes of which we haven't seen in this town in years, for three straight games against the Edmonton Oilers, the Leafs have now lost five of their last six and the one game that they did win was in overtime. We're gonna do this video a little bit differently because my anxiety senses are tingling and I can sense that this fan base is shaking like a leaf. So what happens last night? The start is supposed to be Michael Hutchinson, that makes sense, Freddie played the night before, against Matt Murray. Matt Murray gets hurt in warm up so the Sens need to go to their backup goalie, Joey Decord. Heading into this game, Joey Decord never had a single NHL win and I will live the rest of my life in regret that I did not spend every dollar I own betting on the Sens! Is it an irrational fear if there is mountains of evidence to back it up? That's how damaged this fan base is. They're in first place the entire season. A few off games and we can see the news before the game like, before the game both Senators goalies pulled their groin and Pierre Dorian was seen talking to the hot dog vendor. Uh oh, you know what that means! A hot dog is starting in net! And in the blue paint you just see a bratwurst inside a bun, glove, and blocker. And a mask safety first, he had to borrow an old one from Martin Prushek. If it were Patrick Lelims, the Leafs might have a chance of winning. And upon learning that the hot dog was starting, this fan base would be like the stock exchange! What kind is it? Beef? Pork? Vegetarian? Doesn't matter! Sell, sell, sell! And Sens fans would be updating all their sicko memes with the guy with the Sens hat and the flag and then in the other hand he's got a hot dog! And then they're all wearing Sens jerseys with hot dog on the nameplate and there is a big debate as to what the number should be. 69 is popular but two numbers down the road is 67 and that's also funny but then Heinz Ketchup comes in because remember it's a hot dog they make the number 57 it's a sponsorship I have saved the sense financially and the other controversy is the hot dog is actually taking attention away from the Sprite bottle that was the number one center leading to the headline Leafs bottled it. Most fans in North America are like not your best work but the Brits are like ice hockey in it cracking joke cracking and we still spend the next week going yeah but we're still in first place rest of the league rightly going yeah but you lost to a hot dog yeah but also a bottle of sprite we know that makes it so much worse then the fan base goes yeah well you previously lost to a team that ended up losing to a hot dog and a can of sprite did you say can it was a bottle what's the difference well the difference is a can of sprite never beat the leaves and a bottle did anyway joey decord gets the start and he picks up his first career nhl win congrats to joey michael hutchinson pulled after allowing two goals in how short of a time span was it seven seconds is this a typo <laughs> and in one fell swoop, Michael Hutchinson's entire season goes from, hey, he's actually doing pretty good, to a non-option. And the fan base seems more than willing to immediately replace him with a guy they just got in a trade who they've never heard of. And then what do you need to hear? Before the end of the first period, Zach Hyman scores a Zach Hyman goal, brings the Leafs with him one. Then in the second period, Drake Batherson scores two goals in less than a minute. This time it's against Frederick Anderson because variety is the spice of life. The Leafs pull the goalie despite the fact that they're losing in the third period because, well, they were trying to win at the end of this game. Zach Hyman scores another Zach Hyman goal. William Nylander scores to bring the Leafs with him one. Oh, Oh, never mind, they gave it to Tavares. Nylander didn't even get a point? Do I need to watch this again? No, I don't, because the Leafs got a third, but not a fourth. They lose to the Sens. And now here's the thing. I've had a lot of people go, well, the Leafs are exhausted. They have played an unbelievable amount of games in an unbelievable amount of nights. Guys are playing with injury. Guys are out of the lineup with injury. Guys are playing hurt. They've been traveling a lot too and their shooting percentage and save percentage and not getting the call and getting too many calls. And that just feels like the wheel of excuses going off. And what's behind this door? Glad you asked. It's another first round exit if you're lucky. And just as I was ready to give it to this team, I mean give it to this team. We're talking 9-2 Nashville. We're talking last year in the game that shall not be named. And I'm glad I slept on it. The Leafs' last six games have been awful. That's what I was gonna say. Have they been? The results have been suboptimal. Certainly this game against the Sens and the third game against the Jets were not the Leafs' best at all. But I saw a tweet that helped bring me back down to earth. From Thomas Strantz, who covers the Canucks. He's got no dog in this fight. Maple Leafs have one win in their last six, but during that stretch at five on five, they've controlled 57% of expected goals while converting on fewer than 5.5% of shots and their goalies posted an 894 save percentage. They'll be several points clear at the top of the division again shortly. Listen, maybe I'm dumb. Scratch that, I know I'm dumb. And don't make fun of me because you're still here, so what does that make you? The answer is it makes you lovely and thank you for the support. But the reason I say maybe I'm dumb, 
I'm gonna give him a chance. No, I am not carte blanche ignoring the issues with this team. I am not gonna ignore the goaltending issues that are creeping up with the subtlety of a stampeding elephant. I am not gonna look at the one, two, three, four, five, six defensemen that I have learned to have faith in and who all look like shells of themselves from just a couple weeks ago. Mm, maybe not TJ Brody, I still love you. Yes, you too, I can't hear you, you got the bubble on. We're gonna ignore that Sheldon Keefe has been fidgeting with the line so much the team can be sponsored by the magic bullet. But despite Despite losing five of their last six at the 30 game mark in this 56 game season, the Leafs are still first place in Canada. The Oilers are a solid four points behind them. The Winnipeg Jets have three games in hand and they could pass the Leafs, but coulda, woulda, shoulda actually do it first. And I don't really want to buy the idea that, oh, they've played a lot of games in very few days and they're tired, like you're gonna be able to rest in the playoffs. Let's be even more honest, I'm never gonna be able to have full faith in this team to make it past the first round until they do. However, look at this team. Look at it. Look at the makeup of it. Look at who's on it. Look who's out of the lineup. Just look at it. It's not the same. Look at the way they've been playing the whole season. Not just recently, but the whole season. They're not the same. And they got a weird schedule coming up. Four days off, then a back-to-back -back against Calgary, followed by another four days off. Once they get back into the swing of things, we are going to see if this Leafs team is not the same as years previous. If the team they showed us they were through the first two dozen games of the season wasn't just a flash in the pan. I guess what I'm trying to say is, my name is Charlie Brown and I will kick that damn football! Also, timing is everything and sometimes the universe just speaks to you. I got an email this morning, would you like to see it? Hi Steve, finished your book, did I mention I wrote a book? I finished your book recently and wanted to say how much I enjoyed it. It was really interesting to read about your career journey so far. I loved one of the lines so much, I got it printed to hang in my office. Figured it's a pretty good life lesson. Fun fact, we have our very own Keefe here in Belfast. Sheldon's brother Adam is the head coach of the Belfast Giants. When Sheldon was named head coach of the Leafs, I think every hockey fan in Belfast automatically became a Leafs fan. Hope you and your family stay safe and healthy. Hugs from Belfast, Diane. And the quote that Diane is hanging in her office right now, the game's not over until it's over. Never leave early. And you know what? I'm not leaving. I'm not freaking leaving! They're gonna need a freaking wrecking ball to get me out of here! They're gonna have to call the National Guard because I ain't going nowhere! Now, spoiler alert, I know that at the end of that movie, he did in fact go somewhere because he committed many illegal acts and spent time in prison. Why do so many people think this protagonist is someone you should look up to? Listen, the movie's good, but protagonist does not equal good guy. But let me finally answer the question that I keep getting asked in the comments and on my Twitter and everywhere. Yes. I am in. So when it comes to the 2020-2021 Toronto Maple Leafs, are you in? Because I know what my answer is. And if, no, when they do the thing, it'll be better for me. It'll be better for all of us who said yes. And none of us who said yes will judge any of you who said no at the parade. But inside, we'll all know what our answer was. Questions. Holy cannoli, there were over 600 of them, you guys were mad. Does it really feel like we are 19, nine, and two? Well, no, not at the moment, if you want me to be honest. But think about this, they've lost five of their last six and they're 19, nine, and two. But I know before this little slump, the Leafs looked like a force of nature. Even in the first two games against the Jets, one of which they lost and the other they had to win in overtime, they looked like a force of nature. Who came away from that three game series with the Winnipeg Jets, in which the Winnipeg Jets got five out of six points? Who came away from that three game series going, oh yeah, the Jets are the better team? Anybody? Yeah, but they still got five of six, that wasn't the question. Who's better? You know the answer, it's the Leafs. Hashtag free Galchenyuk. Yeah, a few players have been pretty good in the minors. Uh, Alex Galchenyuk is one of them. Also, Alexander Barabanov doing very well. And obviously Nick Robertson waiting in the wings. Listen, that depth is good, but the Leafs, as they are, have what it takes to win a lot more games than they lose. I'm not worried about Galch. Why does this look like a game of COVID Super Mario Brothers? I <laughs> James, well done. The, 
What are your plans during this break between games? Well, I know I'm not gonna rest because I still have a bunch of stuff to do. And I have a feeling I'm gonna end up having to make a Leafs trade video. I think they're gonna make another one because they got all this time off in quarantine, etc. What else? I know I'm gonna have at least one piece of lasagna and probably change a bunch of diapers. Not my own. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Ask all your friends and ask yourself, are you in? I don't know why I made that face.